The story I will present to you today is a rather odd one, in which a woman killed her boyfriend by strangling him, and then proceeded to cut off his, um, his stick and balls. She would then proceed to write her and her boyfriend's name in blood on his body, as well as carve her name into his arm with a knife. This incident had quite an impact on society at the time. Immediately after the case became public and the murderer was still at large, some cities were sent into a panic when false sightings of her were reported in the area. Some people would worship the woman afterward, displaying admiration towards her true love. In the following decades there would be multiple cases imitating the woman, and many books and movies would be published inspired by her incident. This is the story of Abe Sada. Abe Sada was born in Tokyo in the year of 1905, as the youngest of eight siblings. Her family ran a successful business selling tatami, a type of traditional Japanese mat people use as flooring for their houses. On top of being the youngest child, she was very pretty from a young age, and therefore her family and the people around her would treat her like a princess. They would buy her whatever she wanted, and never say no. People who knew her at this time claimed that by the time Sada was a teenager, she had developed into a rather arrogant and egoistic young lady. At the age of 15, when she was hanging out with a college boy she was close with, he sexually assaulted her. This would cause something within Sada to snap, and she would begin to display delinquent behavior afterward. Sada would take her parents' money and frequent bars and pubs late into the night, as well as having affairs with multiple men in the neighborhood. Keep in mind she was still in her mid-teens at this time. Sada's father, frustrated with her behavior, pretty much locked her in her room for a year or so, but this did nothing to improve her attitude. When one of her siblings was to get married, Sada's parents decided to get rid of her, as she would bring shame upon the family. She was sold to a human trafficker, who then passed her on to a geisha house. For those of you who do not know, consider geisha as something of a dancer, a woman who performs dances and plays instruments for wealthy clients. During her stint as a geisha, Sada discovered it is much more profitable to sell her body, rather than just dancing. And before long that would become her main source of income. For the next several years Sada would move from town to town, providing her services to local men, living day to day. But eventually she would begin to look for a more stable source of income, a more normal, or legitimate style of life. Eventually Sada would stumble upon a restaurant in Tokyo, where she used the fake name to work as a waitress and maid, and was given a room to live in on the premises. The owner of this restaurant was Ishida Yoshizo, the man who would end up losing his life and certain body parts to Sada. Although Yoshizo was already married with children, Sada and Yoshizo would be drawn to each other, and begin slipping out of the restaurant together every now and then. While they were making love, Sada would sometimes put a knife against Yoshizo's stick, threatening to cut it off if he tried to fool around with other women. Yoshizo brushed it off as some kind of joke, unaware of the fate that awaited him. They would also begin to engage in breath play, in which Sada would choke Yoshizo either with her hands or some kind of rope. Yoshizo took quite a liking to this, claiming it enhanced the pleasure he would experience while making love. Eventually, his wife would find out about the couple's adulterous acts. When confronted by his wife, Yoshizo chooses to leave the restaurant with Sada, and stay in random hotels for the next few weeks. On May 16, 1936, during one of their breath play sessions, Sada took it a bit too far, resulting in Yoshizo experiencing neck pains. Sada went to buy painkillers and sleeping pills, and for whatever reason gave him a severe overdose of the drugs. While he was unconscious, Sada would begin to choke Yoshizo, this time putting him to sleep forever. She would then proceed to cut off his stick and balls, wrap them in paper, and keep them with her. Using the blood gushing out of the now severed stick, she would write Sada and Yoshizo together on his leg. To top it off, Sada carved her name into Yoshizo's arm with a knife. Pleased with her work, she left the hotel at around 8 a.m. the next day, telling the clerk, My friend is very tired, please don't disturb him until afternoon. It is unclear what triggered this somewhat spontaneous murder, but it can be assumed the fact that Yoshizo's wife found out, and that their relationship may be coming to an end played a part. 
Of course, it didn't take long for the body to be found. Newspapers would begin reporting the story by morning of the next day. The story of this bizarre murder spread like wildfire. Because the newspapers only reported vague details of Sada's appearance, false sightings of her were reported in multiple major cities, sending nearby areas into a panic. On May 19th, only three days since the day of the crime, Sada did some shopping and watched a movie in a theater, seemingly oblivious to the situation she had put herself in. When police officers showed up at her hotel's door in the afternoon, she simply said, I'm the Abe Sada you are looking for. She was seen smiling as the police took her away, surprising both the police and the public with her nonchalant attitude. When questioned on what her motives were, Sada would answer, I loved him very, very much. I wanted his everything. Since we were not officially married, he could have gone to other women. I figured if I took his life, he would never touch a woman other than myself. As for why she cut off the man's stick, she claims, It is the most precious part of his body. By carrying it around, it made me feel as if he was with me all the time. Sada was sentenced to six years in prison, but was released early in 1941. After being released, she would change her identity amidst the chaos of the Second World War, and married another man. However, when a magazine released an article regarding her story, Sada became furious on how certain facts were misrepresented, and sued the publisher. This revealed her true identity to the people around her, resulting in her husband leaving her, and causing her to move to another location. So Sada was back to her old lifestyle of moving around the country, living day to day. She would be seen appearing in freak shows, telling her story with a replica of Yoshizo's stick in hand. Over time, Sada and her story would fade from public memory, and her whereabouts are unknown. Until the year 1987, someone would anonymously send flowers to Yoshizo's grave every year, and people suspect this was Sada's doing. If this is the case, it can be assumed she passed away somewhere around the time the flowers stopped coming. In the decades following her incident, there would be multiple similar cases. In 1953, a woman would take her boyfriend's life and take his stick. In 1954, another woman would attempt to melt her boyfriend's stick with acid. In 1972, there was a woman who was working as a maid at a traditional hotel, having an affair with the hotel owner's son. The maid thought the relationship would eventually go somewhere, but the son was just having fun. When the woman found out, let's just say she was not very pleased. What all of these cases have in common is that the idea of the man leaving, or having affairs with another woman, is what drove these women to commit these crimes. It is unclear if they were directly inspired by Sada, but it is fair to assume she had some influence. Or maybe stick slicing murders are always fairly common, and Sada's case made it mainstream, I don't know. There would also be many novels and movies made after Abe Sada. The most famous of these films goes by the English title, in the Realm of the Senses, released in 1976. This movie was premiered in multiple international movie festivals and caused major controversy due to its graphic nature. More than a dozen other titles can be confirmed just from Wikipedia, the newest movie being made as recent as 2011, and I'm sure there are many other titles that were lost to time. Interestingly, many of these movies are adult films, so I guess some guys have fantasies of being choked to death and having certain body parts cut off. What do you think of Abe Sada and her story? Was she a psychopathic murderer? Or can you partially understand her motives, especially considering her difficult upbringing? Let me know in the comments below. As always, thank you for watching until the end. Please like, subscribe, and turn on notifications if you like this kind of content. I'll see you next time.